guys uh, just answering somebody's question relating to why is it old men go to the philippines to find women when they can't find women in their own country ah uh, reality is they already did find women in their own country and the reality is most of those men quite simply don't want a western woman um if you can grasp that and i assume it's probably more likely a woman that would say that sort of thing um then you're probably exactly why a lot of guys go to asia and other places um because if, if you ask me what the reality is for a lot of people in the uk women are selfish greedy consumer orientated um self-focused not just selfish but self-focused not selfish in the sense of as a family or as a group but purely for themselves um i'm not saying all women like it but i'm saying a lot of people are having the same experience to the point they are no longer interested the reality is we're in a global economy a global economy will actually put other people that are better um, into a position where you can be replaced. It's not that the guys are sad, can't get a woman. They just don't want them. My, my wife will tell you herself, when, when we first met, we weren't even looking at dating, but quite simply, I was happy being single. I wasn't interested in dating anybody. I was buying a new car, getting a new apartment, and quite simply had zero interest in getting a relationship. And it's the same as men that go their own way. It's exactly the same. There is something fundamentally wrong with Western society right now. And quite simply, it's all the way through the system. It's not just about the uh, empowerment. I mean, the whole um, sexist stuff that is driven uh, these days is often drivel. Because a lot of it has already been dealt with. There is a false equality thing being pushed like when they talk about the um, differences in pay gaps and skill gaps but don't put factor in all the other different layers that go to make that difference up in the first place when you've got people working night shifts and other things like the police do and they're predominantly male because their women want family friendly hours um, but they still want the same overtime pay even though they're not there now if you think that's all fair I would say, well, that's fine. Because if you're coming from a woman's point of view, you would think that. Because you think that you should get paid the same, even though you're not doing the same job. In the same way, as a guy, I would say, fine. Get stuffed. At the end of the day, I do the work, do the hours, should get the pay. Um, so that division is exactly the sort of thing that drives this. The way the court system is developed around the ownership of uh, wealth to protect the state and basically not deal with the bigger problem that are, there is a lot of uneducated people out there. Um, there's also a lot of people that do not want to work and had no intention of working. Um, even for somebody on a medial job, the, the answer is with a separation that they would expect the man to pay the way of the women and the kids. Um, I know myself with the family courts, the first things on the forms beyond your name and address, etc., is your income information. And it's why these courts are also private, because they will actually prosecute you for declaring what goes on in these family courts. There's a lot of stuff that is done to basically punish men um, for failures that are often nothing to do with them. The failures could be that the woman womanizes, cheats or whatever, and it leads to a divorce or even just a separation and they're not even married, but they still want to cling on to the wealth. Um, so that answers some of the questions. The other thing is, is it all men are old, sad and whatever? A lot of the guys that go to the Philippines ain't old. And as I've said before, I went out to the Philippines over a decade ago. You know... I'm, been, well, just coming up to mid-40s. So the answer to that is no. Um, there's a lot of guys that go in their 70s or 60s or whatever. So what? 
Are you that bitter and disappointed with yourself that you have to project your hate onto other people? Is it because nobody likes you? Well, grow some and grow up. Um, do something about it. It's beyond whinging. That's the grim realities. Um, because I'll tell you what, most of the men I meet in the Philippines, whatever, they're not miserable. They may not be 100% content a lot of the time, but none of them want to go home. None of them want to go back to where they come from. None of them have an interest in the women that they left behind because they've moved to a country that A, accepts them, but B, they haven't got all that clingy stuff that revolves around stealing as much as possible. I mentioned on a recent video relating to a relative who's had to give up 70%, uh, sorry, 50% of his pension along with a lump sum and other things and half the house for his ex-wife, bear in mind they had no kids, that was quite capable of looking after herself. That's why a lot of men are not interested. Like I said, selfish is the, the predominant one. Self-centered greed. Um, now, it doesn't mean a lot of Western women are bad people. It means that they're, they have been um, a systematic skewing of the entire system. To, to push the fact that something that should have been a thought or weighed up in the sense that if you have two partners and, what, and they've got um, kids, then the kids should be supported and looked after. But there is no factor that the mother has never worked in her life and has no intention of working. In worst case scenario, she'll probably pop out another kid if she had to. Um, that is a reality of the United Kingdom. Look at teens and that these days. A lot of them are not interested in marriage. A lot of the guys aren't even interested in having a long-term relationship because they realize that the United Kingdom is nothing more than a money pit, financially focused, and nothing else. The morals have gone, the guidance is gone, the social responsibility is gone. All you're left with is a broken PC brigade society that basically says, shut up, put up, and give us your money. And I can't say it any fairer than that. Now, I did get an email today um, relating to somebody wanting to go to the Philippines that's had enough in a UK company. And as I told them, I understand exactly where it comes from. Because you probably hear me complain about Carillion because I've seen the corruption, the failure coming a long time ago. Um, so I understand the fact that the way companies are running in the UK is terrible these days. Um, it's all fake. That's the that's the disgusting thing in a lot of this. It is fake. It's all false fronts, com corporate magazines and all this. We have a policy on how we take care of people. One of the funny things with um, Carillion is they promoted this thing where you get half a day a month to go and do charity work on behalf of the company. That half a day was actually a tax incentive. They didn't pay tax on it. So they get the money for your wages to pay you that you would have done for taking a half a day off to go and do charity work. Um, so it cost them absolutely nothing. They use it for um, media coverage. And then all the stuff you have been doing anyway, they want the credit for. So if you've been doing the Boy Scouts for the last 25 years, Carillion suddenly comes along, can we send the camera crew along with you? And we can say that our Carillion employee helps out twice a week on that Wednesday and a Friday. That's, that's the UK. I hate it. I despise that stuff. Yet, the put up and shut up is stopping people um, being able to do something about it because people are worried about losing their jobs by stepping out of line or saying something. This is like what I, like I said in the last video was like trying to email Tommy Robinson because quite simply I just want to chat to him. Now instantly I know, I shouldn't say this now, but the expectation is I'll get a backlash for simply just wanting to talk to him. There is no, at no point have I said my political alignments are the same because the fact is a lot of the time there's many things I don't agree with, but that's the whole point of a discussion. But that is a prime example of getting tired with a brush purely because of discussing something. 
Now back to the email. Um, is the guy's looking at going out to the Philippines, getting a feel for the place and see if he likes it. First thing I would say with that is you're probably going to find when you arrive in the Philippines, it's all going to be fantastic, great and loving it. After a while, some of the stuff starts kicking in. People burning rubbish, neighbors leaving rubbish outside or um, loud motorbikes going past all hours of the night, karaoke, bits and pieces. And you do get used to a lot of it. But I also do recommend like hopping in and out from time to time because socially it's worth doing it, unless you can find a good expat community um, where you have a lot of people that on the same wavelengths. Um, because otherwise, if you're sort of cut off into just a localized community, it's a localized community. A lot of things like politics, discussing stuff outside of the Philippines is almost non-existent. Um, you've got to find people of the similar level, background, interest and stuff to keep yourself occupied and keep yourself busy because one of the big things that people suffer with there is alcoholism. Alcoholism is brought on from boredom in most cases, unless they're alcoholic before they arrived. Um, but the point is, that is one of the big problems, is keeping occupied, keeping busy, realizing a lot of stuff is not ex easily accessible in you just buy it left, right and center. A lot of stuff is not available. Um, so you just become aware of this stuff. And one thing I do recommend is get yourself a little notebook. And when you hop out of the country, say go to the back to the UK for a month or so, take a shopping list. Get some couriers for the old ballot buying boxes to ship the stuff back for you. And then you can actually be buying stuff. Like say you've got a relative who can stick your stuff in their garage. They take all your stuff for you. You, when you go back, you load it all up or get the rest of the stuff you want as well. And then you stick it in the ballot buying box. It'll take about two months to get to the Philippines. And when you come back, all the stuff's there. I do it with a lot of things like herbs and things, a lot of spices and teas and things like that, stuff that's not easily accessible. But a lot of it is accessible now compared to when I first went out to the Philippines. Um, relationships. As I mentioned to him, because he's not looking at marriage, he's, I assume he's been down that road before. With that, all I'd say is just confirm things at day one. A, you want to live in the Philippines, you're not going to take the partner back to the West. B, that you're not interested in marriage, but looking for long-term companionship, relationship, etc. Like anything, like it or lump it, you know, you, you, they make the decisions. And it may sound a bit blunt and everything else, but... The problem you get, a lot of people have expectations that is built on things they've heard and seen and not facts. So if you're clear from day one, they may not like it and may disappear, fine. There's a lot of women out there that are interested in somebody that is capable of looking after themselves, which gets back to the beginning. That is one of the problems. If you're coming from a background where you are financially independent, able to work, etc. That's why the UK puts the burden on you. And like now, the discussion relating to this pension thing, where they want to go after taxing more people on pensions and giving 25-year-olds money, the, the reason for that is taxing more old people, and that's unfair, not everybody's old, because a lot of government workers retire in their 50s. Um, the reality is, that that is to actually pull money into the treasury. It's not for the public benefit, let's be honest. And you'll probably find they would separate the two. So they would want to tax people that are, say, 70, still working at B&Q. Uh, at the same time, the 25-year-olds getting the £10,000 could end up on an extended um, payment system or whatever, so that it takes a, a fair bit of vetting to even get near it because it gives them a taxing mechanism but giving them back will be slow I can guarantee it unless they're seeing something relating to the housing market collapse which is where they might tie it into first time buyers they don't actually give it to you now that's a thought there's nothing mentioned about that but imagine getting your first £10,000 of your deposit paid for you I could see them doing that because um, at, at the end of the day, the housing market in the UK is going to collapse. It's primed for it. Um, 
it can't maintain it. This is why they're after the 25 somethings because they need more of them to buy houses to keep the chain going. And the bizarre thing is that it's not a sustainable model. If you look at um, the rise of automation and things like artificial intelligence, there's a new thing come out with Google now. I think it's called Google, Google Duplex, which actually will, you can say to it like, Google, book me a, a taxi for 10 o'clock tomorrow afternoon um, to pick me up at the golf club or whatever. And it makes those calls for you and has a artificial intelligence voice, etc. that sounds like a person talking. That's the reality. The big problem with the globe right now is there's more people and there is work and we're in a system that is actually declining and reducing the work because of automation. Even China's feeling it because the mobilization of automation in China is growing at a phenomenal rate. Um, just something to think about. The big problem is population. The rest of it, it's all part and parcel of that, but trying to tell people they need to reduce the number of people is not very politically uh, acceptable anywhere. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so I hope that answers the questions. And I would definitely say if you're 30 something, 40 something, 50s or whatever, go to the Philippines. And I'll follow on with a video after this one relating to what I'm about to talk about. So I'll do a second video.